Hello, starting the vlog with a little sugar scrub. I just mixed together some olive oil and sugar because it's literally snowing outside and I was in the cold today for longer than I should have been because it's so cold and gross and uh, my lips got really dry. So I'm just doing a quick homemade sugar scrub. Sugar. <laughs> so tonight, Max and I are going to an event with an alcohol-free beer company that he, I think, is working with. And then we're going to a screening with Florence Pugh, which I'm very excited about. But I'm due on my period, so I'm in the phase of what I call strangling a cat phase, because sometimes I feel so frustrated and like screaming at this point in my cycle that I feel like I could strangle a kitten or a cat, which is obviously horrendous and I never would. But that hopefully describes how I'm feeling. I think it would be really good for me to get some jeans on. Jeans and a nice top. Recently for my base, I've been using the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue in Buttercream 03. And then I tried out a really expensive concealer from Hourglass. Do not waste your money. It just did not do anything for me. It just kept catching under my eyes, which I hate. So I went back to a really, really cheap high street concealer and it's the collection Lasting Perfection one. And the shade I'm using is Extra Fair 4. I recently bought a new mascara. I bought this Ico one, which is their Limitless Mascara in Black Noir. I really like it. It's not too heavy, not too clumpy, buildable. Lip product wise, the only two products that I ever really use on my lips is this CYO lip liner. And then I fill in with Charlotte Tilbury and Pillow Talk. Okay, not very good lighting to show you my outfit, but I've got on my vintage necklace, plain black body, this gorgeous cardigan, which I thrifted in Amsterdam. Trusty black belt, trusty vintage jeans, and then my second hand boots. Oh dear. It is Sunday today and it's hair wash day. As you can see, I look like I have been dragged through a bush backwards. And I also have very distressing news. The Shalazian that I had on and off in this eye, basically all of last summer, has made another appearance and I am heartbroken. I wear waterproof mascara because I honestly don't know any other way to try and keep my eyes, eyelashes curled, right? I know this is very basic, silly problems, but the only way for me to kind of have my eyes stay in that cold position after curling them is to use a waterproof mascara. And then I top up with a normal mascara. And then the only way for me to get my mascara off because I don't like, like the residue of mascara is to use an oil-based remover. I usually use coconut oil or I'll use, if I don't have access to a coconut oil, which I didn't last week, I just use some facial oil big mistake because I think that oil is too oily for my eye because I think that's what causes Shalazians. I think it's like blocked ducts and too much oil. I think that is the cause of my Shalazian. I just can't believe I'm here again. I'm just really annoyed at myself as well because I know that I have to make cleaning my eyes with warm water a part of my nighttime routine. I'm very, very open to suggestions from Dr. YouTube. Um, please let me know if you're someone who has suffered with these in the past, how you managed to cure them and also can anyone suggest a non oil based eye makeup remover that you love because I do think that would really help things if I can find an eye makeup remover that I absolutely adore that isn't too oily but does remove waterproof mascara. Big requests. As you know, I spend quite a lot of time on TikTok and recently TikTok has just been trying to sell me rosemary oil from different Amazon shop links, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I've just been inundated with how rosemary oil is the thing that grows your hair. 
And really, I don't wanna be buying a new product that I don't necessarily know works. Generally, I find like oily products can make my hair really, really greasy and then it's really hard to wash the grease out. Um, so instead, I got a big bunch of rosemary and then boiled it in filtered water in a saucepan. Actually, I didn't boil it, I simmered it for 20 minutes. And then I put it through a strainer and put all of it in this bottle. And so I've made myself like a homemade rosemary water, which is obviously super cheap to make. And I made a full bottle, which that's my hand, quite a big bottle. Um, and I've been putting it in my hair like when I've remembered to over the past week. And I'll keep you posted. I'm not like, I'm really happy with the length of my hair at the moment, but I'm always looking for like a bit more thickness and volume. So um, yeah. Basically just put it all in my hair. By the way, it does go like a red color and it does get a bit stainy, um, which is wild. Like, yeah, the color of it has gone red, which only happened um, after a couple of days. So if you do make this, recommendation is to be careful when you use it because it might stain. Another big capitalist hair trend at the moment has been um, those head massage tools, which I feel like Aveda did about five years ago. I remember, to go, I remember I went to get a scalp treatment at Aveda, which was absolutely incredible. And they were really on this like back then. I keep seeing those like, yeah, massage scalp tools. And again, I'm thinking like, sure, those look really lovely, but ultimately I can just do that with my hands. What's wrong with your hands is what I'm saying. And like a humble bit of rosemary. We'll do like a little before. This is the before. I'm probably going to get my hair cut in that time as well, so I don't know if it will be very accurate. That is what we're gonna do. I'm also going to de-lint my favorite mini skirt. I got sent some treats from Steamery, which I'm already a fan of. I bought, um, actually Max gave me a Steamery steamer for Christmas a couple of years ago. So I'm already a fan of the brand. So when they got in touch and said, can we send you some goodies? I was like, 100%. Twist the handle to the right to expose the brush. Aha, uh -huh. there is the brush. Brush off hair and lint in the direction where the bristle slides with a small resistance. A lifesaver for pet owners, apparently. Lightweight, perfect on the go. Lovely. Real quick, I just did wanna do an eye update. Things have got worse. I don't know if you can see that, and equally I don't wanna come in too close because <sighs> when I last properly chatted to you, I was in London going to the screening of A Good Person. Thank you so much to Sky for working with me as part of the Sky Cinema Club collaboration. And also thank you for taking me to the screening because it was so exciting. So not only did we get to see this incredible film, which is directed by Zach Braff, starring the one and only Florence Pugh and Morgan Freeman, among many other brilliant, brilliant actors. They were there and they introduced the film together, Zach and Florence, and then they did a Q&A afterwards. Making movies like this only works if you trust every single person there. Um, for everybody, like both people involved, all actors, um, you need so much trust and a lot of safety. I cried so much in this film. Honestly, I had to stop myself from sobbing. I think I've seen most of Florence's films. I've seen her in Midsommar. Sorry for my pronunciation, it might be Midsummer. Um, I've also seen her in Little Women. I've seen her in many other films, which I will leave here. But I think this is her best ever performance that I've seen her in. It's about family and grief and loss and love and heartbreak and addiction 
and recovery. It is a roller coaster ride. I would say that Zach Braff directs the film in such a way. It reminds me of a song because it is so intense and what Florence's character goes through is just awful. He gives you moments in the film where you feel a sense of release and relief, which is so welcome because honestly it is a lot. And the best way I can describe this is he has brought the film together as if he is conducting an orchestra. And it's also funny. It's really funny. There are real moments of light. And for anyone who has experienced grief, you'll know that the light moments and the funny moments and the comedy moments in those horrendously dark moments catch you completely by surprise and the film really echoes that. The thing that I found so interesting was someone from the audience said to Florence how do you cope with a role like this? How do you find moments of rest and respite? And she said if you know me and you know my work you know I like to go deep like I don't want it any other way. And Zach said that he wrote this character for her because he's aware of Florence's talent and he knows just how deep she can go, which I just love. Like what an amazing sense of trust you can have in a person to know that they will write a character for you and they trust you to take it to that level. I, was, I mean, if you do get the opportunity to watch it, please let me know what you thought. I am honestly, I was just, floored by it. And I would be very, very, very surprised if Florence doesn't win multiple awards for it. Hello, it's me from the future. I'm just editing this part of the video and I've realized that I failed to mention that A Good Person will be available on Sky Cinema from April. You can also catch it in cinemas this month. And the other film that is premiering on Sky Cinema this month is Marlowe. And I also wanted to flag that there is a brand new women in film collection on Sky Cinema this month, which you can learn more about just here. Right, twist the handle two to three times to clean the brush. One, two, three. No. Hello. We've got a parcel of yours. Oh, bless you. Okay. That was so cute. My neighbor just came around and said that they had a parcel for us. Oh, cool. And then it pops out like this. I'm currently reading Educated by Tara Westover, which I'm enjoying so much. And I did want to ask you if you think it's worth me getting a secondhand Kindle. Also, I really feel, okay, so for context, um, I'm very much a book girl. I love a physical hard copy of a book, something about turning the pages, the smell of it, um, being able to re-gift it to someone, swap it with someone, lend it, all that stuff, love. I'm very much a book girl. However, I am going to be traveling a little bit this summer, nothing major, but I will be moving around a little bit. And instead of taking four books with me, say to go away for a week, I was thinking, would it be wise for me to get a Kindle? So it's just small, has all my books and basically just frees me up space wise. So I was thinking about potentially getting one secondhand, but wanted to hear what your thoughts are. Are you Kindle people? My only thing with getting a secondhand Kindle is that I think I will then have to buy digital copies of the books that I want, eBooks, otherwise known as eBooks. Um, and I think I have to do that through Amazon and I don't really want to do that through Amazon. Is there an alternative to Amazon in terms of eBooks? And if there's not, gap in the market. So advice, please. And also if you're looking for a book to read, this is great, I'm, I think, I'm 100 pages in and it's it's really excellent. While I have you, there's another film that I really want to recommend. It's called After Sun and it stars Paul Mezcal. He plays a young father and it's about his relationship between him and his daughter, who he takes on holiday to Turkey one summer. And if you're someone who grew up in the kind of late 90s, early noughties, it will be super nostalgic, but it's also very, very current and it's, quite an emotional film but it's beautiful it really makes you think you're kind of like after watching it I felt I felt like I had to kind of take a moment take a moment to take it in but it's really really gorgeous um so I'm very 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 happy to recommend that and then this weekend I want to watch everything everywhere all at once I think that's the name of it it just picked up 
all the Oscars. I'm just making some lunch. I just dry fried some tofu and then added some tamari and some sesame oil. Mashed up some avocado with some lemon and salt and pepper. There was quite a bit of tamari and sesame oil left in this pan, so I just added some spinach. I actually feel like the... I actually feel like the um, spinach is going to make the sandwich wet. And nobody wants a wet sandwich, right? Hey, I was just trying to put together an outfit that was like, yay, spring summer is here. And I got really overwhelmed. And I think it's because it was a style that I hadn't worn before. And obviously we haven't been dressing for spring and summer for like a really long time now. So I just thought, scrap it, put on an outfit that you know makes you feel good and that suits this time of year, which is what I've done. And I feel so much better. Vintage shirt with this secondhand jumper, stuff you've seen a million times. My wedding dress that's been upcycled. Put it with some comfy burks. Sweet. Cute, I love it. It's time for a snack and I found these new hippies in the supermarket. And they're, they're featuring This Isn't Smoky Bacon. If you have eaten Frazzles, which is a bacon flavoured UK crisp, they taste like Frazzles. Hello. Hello, good morning. I'm making myself a coffee, as you can see. So, I finished The Last of Us, um, which if you haven't seen, I didn't think I would enjoy it. It's based on a video game, need I say more. It's honestly one of my favorite TV shows I've seen in a long time. Every episode was a masterpiece, especially episode three, which was just incredible. Please tell me if you've seen the whole series that I'm not alone in this. I genuinely found the last episode such a letdown after such an incredible series and I would still 100% recommend this series, but it almost felt as though I had missed something and there was another episode that I didn't know about. It, I, I was, I'm just so disappointed. My latte art, as you can see, was unsuccessful. You can't win them all. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you again really soon because I'm going to continue filming today. I want to film like an outfits video, but only made from last year's outfits. Does that make sense? Probably not. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye. Can you believe I did an outro again?